Hi everyone. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to talk about GitHub. Uh, GitHub uh, is again another developer experience enhancement tool on Kubernetes. So uh, how many of you have used Kubernetes here? And Docker. How many have used Docker? Okay, quite a lot. So uh, this is only uh, this, as the title says, it's about uh, continuous deployment to Kubernetes using Git. Um, so there's a lot of Docker Kubernetes talk involved here. Um, I hope um, everyone will be able to go through this. So a little bit about. Uh, Myself, uh, so I'm Shahid. You can find me on Twitter. And uh, so I'm from this company called uh, Hasuda. So, anyone heard of Hasuda before from the crowd? Okay, great. Yeah, nice to see some hands. So, uh, we work on uh, Kubernetes, Docker, Postgres, GraphQL, and the other, and some of the other trending, latest, new tech stuff out there right now, open source tech stuff. So we recently open sourced our uh, GraphQL engine on Postgres, uh, and that's the primary product that we offer. We also have a Kubernetes platform, which is a more enterprise-oriented uh, product. So you can find all of it on GitHub, go there and start it, and makes us feel happy. So I work at Asura, especially on uh, the uh, Kubernetes and Docker, and uh, CLI stuff and all. So, any Heroku users here? People have used Heroku. Okay. So Heroku introduced this concept of uh, Git push. So earlier, what uh, everyone was doing is they write code, they test it, run it locally, test it locally, and when they want to get it onto a server uh, on the internet, what they had to do was uh, somehow. I don't know, in earlier days, I remember using FTP to copy files on a machine, but later people figured that they can just clone the repository on the server, run some scripts over there, get it working. And then Heroku came in and reduced this new way of doing things, which is Git push. You had to just write the code and just do Heroku app create and then just do Heroku, Git push Heroku master. So what this did was it takes the language that your code is written in using something called build paths and then deploys it on a Heroku container, so called container. So this was very uh, eye-opening for developers. Now they did not have to depend on let, let's imagine the life of a front-end developer. The only thing the front-end developer cares about is my application is working in my browser. I know JavaScript, I know how to fix things. I don't need to care about SSH, installing some stuff on that, MPD get installed, or YAM installed, whatever. I just need to get this application delivered to my users. And Heroku made that possible with just one click push. So now comes Kubernetes. Or before that, there came Docker. Docker also introduced this way of doing things, uh, packaging your application into a container, which can be run anywhere. So a developer only need to create a container by writing a Docker file, and then if they can put this container anywhere they want and get get their code working over there. So this was also a very good step for developers. Now they only need to learn about whatever stack they are working on, and they just need to do a little bit Docker. So if their Docker container can run on their machine, they can just give it off to anybody who can then deploy it on to. Uh, uh, server on the internet, either using Kubernetes, Docker, Docker Swarm, Docker Compose, whatever. So, then Kubernetes came and then introduced one more layer of Docker all this, the Kubernetes YAML files. Now, developers had to write the code, write Docker file, write Kubernetes YAML files, and then everything is set. Once they give it off to anybody else, they can just deploy this app. So, we thought, okay, 
this this process can be easily uh, can be made a lot easier. As a developer, okay, you might need to know Docker, you might need to know a little bit about the Kubernetes YAML you want. But if you want to get your changes immediately on a Kubernetes cluster, how can we how how do we get to from your laptop to Kubernetes in the fastest way possible? So this is uh, similar to a lot of constraints that OpenShift introduced, but OpenShift builds on top of Kubernetes, and it's a different one more thing that you need to maintain. Kubernetes is readily available on all the major cloud providers right now. You can click two buttons and get a Kubernetes cluster. So this was the scenario before and after GitHub. Uh, Let's see. So there are there were three commands. You write code. You do a Docker build, then you do a Docker push to any registry, then you use kubectl command to edit the image, uh, image name to the current image that you built. So GitHub aims to simplify this process, and this is not just about three commands. You need to also think about how much time it will take. So if you are building a complex application and the Docker file contains several installation steps for several different instances. Depending on internet connection, all these build and push steps can take from anywhere uh, from few minutes to a few tens of minutes. So if you have a couple of GPs to uh, build and push and all, it's going to take a lot of time. So we thought, uh, let's, let's uh, make this process uh, a bit easier. Uh, what we need is to build the container. So why don't we just build the container in the cluster itself? where uh, high-speed internet is guaranteed by the cloud provider. So, the way this is achieved is using Git hooks. So, uh, how many of you have used uh, Git hooks earlier? <laughs> okay, great number. Uh, an interesting crowd here today. So, Git hooks let us you, uh, lets you hook certain actions to your Git commands. So, pre-commit hooks are there, pre-push hooks are there, post receive receive hooks are there. So what you can do with git hook, git hooks are pretty amazing. With a, a common thing that I do is to well had a pre-commit hook which makes some linting and other kind of checks before I commit and push code to a hook. So we make use of a hook which is called a post receive. This is used to validate the code that you push to a remote before, after after the code is received, after the objects have been received, but before the tree is moved forward to that code, that object. So I'll come back, come back to revisit this later. So git push combined with git hooks gives you a lot of power. So the demo codes were not released earlier. Let's see how that uh, let's see how it, that works out now. So I have a short demo. I also have a recording available in case, but that's again in YouTube video, so in the next is I don't know how it's going to work out. So uh, let's look at the demo. I'm just going to mirror my display. Okay, so this is the Git GitHub repository. Um, it's open source tool ready to go. Um, so contributions welcome. Please go and start it. It just makes us feel better. So you can install GitHub on any Kubernetes cluster just by doing this kubectl create command. So we have also made a CLI just to make this thing easier so that uh, you don't need to do this, get this YAML every time. So I'm going to use the CLI right now, but CLI is not at all required. The whole value proposition here is that you don't need anything else other than Git on your system. That's the whole value proposition. You don't need Docker on your local machine, you don't need Git on your local machine, all you need is Git. So, I have the Git Cube CLI installed. I also have a Kubernetes cluster on GKE here. Uh, I created this just yesterday. So my Git context is pointing to that. So I, all I need to do is to do, uh, is, it, is the font visible? Should I zoom it? Okay. 
So when I do git cube install, it's going to install certain components on the Kubernetes cluster and it's going to ask you how do you want to expose the service. So these are all Kubernetes constructs. So I'm just going to say load balancer. Uh, because this is GKE, uh, it's the easiest way to move forward. So while that is getting created, I am going to, so there are many configurations available. GitHub will help you build your source code and deploy it. It will also apply certain Kubernetes YAMLs for you and it can also apply help charts. So I'm going to show the mono repo example in which this manifest directory contains my contains an nginx deployment and service object for Kubernetes. Uh, microservices directory contains Docker file and an index.html file. So if you look at the index.html, so there is some HTML here. Now this is not a git repo, so I'm going to initialize a git repo here and I'm going to add all this and commit this git repo. So this can be any git repository. Now I'm going to do git cube. So this, then you have to write, okay, so git cube makes use of something called Kubernetes custom resource definitions. Uh, how many of you have heard of CRDs? So it's something which it lets you do this, give you give CTL get remotes. So it says no results for right now. So to make git cube work, you need to write something called a git cube uh, remote.yaml and again one more YAML to deal with. So we thought let's make developers life easier. We have a construct for that, git cube remote create hyphen uh, You see to give a file name. Uh, I need to use generate. So it will help me uh, create this remote for YAML file. Um, I have to give all and keep answering these questions. So I'm going to use get Kubernetes manifest. So I'm going to give this. I'm not going to configure it on the registry right now. I'm just going to give these things. My So these are the docker file path and build context path for the docker command. So this creates mono repo remote.yaml in this directory now. So I have this yaml file available to me. So now all I need to do is kubectl create this yaml file or there is a method in the CLI also kube create iphone and mono repo remote. Okay, so the remote is created on the cluster and it's telling me this is the remote URL. Uh, so this can be obtained from the, if I did kubectl create, I can get this from the remote object. So example, if I look at the YAML for this thing, I can find the remote URL here also. So I do get remote add to this. So now if I look at my git remotes, there is a remote called example. Then all I need to do is, and it's pointing to the Kubernetes cluster. So this is the IP of the Kubernetes cluster, which we can see from here. There is a git cube D service available, which has a public IP. Now this IP, or pushes are only possible to this IP using SSH key authorization. So if you look at this remote here, I have my SSH public key available here and only I can push to this remote. So it's totally okay to leave this off to the public. So I, all I need to do is git push example master. So now you can see the Kubernetes manifests are being applied. Uh, deployment created, service created and this is all coming from the Kubernetes cluster. So if this is all the git, git remote responding to the client and docker image is being built, you can see that the docker image is being built and it's also saying that deployments are fully rolled out. So if I look at the deployments now, I can see that www is running and if I look at the service now, I can see that it's still waiting for an external IP but the service is available. 
So what I did here is I created a Kubernetes deployment and service object. And I pushed my source code, built and Docker image also to crawl out just with a git push. So if you are used to the Kubernetes Docker space, you would understand how this makes your life easier. Because you would have executed 10 different commands till now and uh, it would have taken a hell lot of time. So let's look at the IP. Yeah, okay. Public IP is available. So now if I go to this IP, oops, wrong IP. If I go to this IP, I can see the Nginx container is serving this type of HTML file. Now we have to go through a little bit of uh, Kubernetes stuff here. The remote YAML had to be created, some uh, Git remotes had to be set up. But once this is done, for every edit that you make, if you look at it, uh, if I want to make some modifications to my Nginx HTML, all I need to do is, so let's say what I'm going to do here is, I'm going to remove this. I'm going to add a gif. So all I need to do is git commit. And then just push again. So by doing this, the locker is being rebuilt and deployed on the cluster. And uh, I did not execute any locker command. I did not execute any CTL command. I will go and refresh my page. And still loading. Oops. OK, my awesome GIF did not work, I guess. Ah, OK. It's going to happen. GIF is a bit. Lazy to go today. Good, good. Uh, okay, anyway. So your code is changed now. You got the new files running here. Uh, so anyway, wherever you want to make changes, you edit, you commit, and you will push. And uh, your changes will be live on the Kubernetes cluster. We'll come back and see later if this loads. So, going back to my presentation, um, let's talk about a little bit. Of, let's talk a little bit about how this is going to work. Um, let's. Yeah. So, how this is? Work? Let's talk a little bit about the architecture. So. When we did GitCube install, uh, all it did was create certain Kubernetes objects. And one of, uh, one of them is uh, this, uh, yeah. is this uh, okay, Kubernetes controller. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about it later. And uh, so then what happened is you had your computer where you created a remote from there. And what happened is it created a Kubernetes custom resource definition on the cluster. And the controller sees that a new definition has been created. It creates a Git remote on the cluster. And now you can push to this Git remote. And that will update the deployment or create the deployment. And also build a Docker image and roll out the um, Docker image. So here we, we are achieving the Docker build using a Git pre-receive hook on the cluster. These are all implementation details if you are really interested in how GitCube works, then only you need to worry about all these things. Otherwise, you don't need to care about any of this. You can just keep keep pushing your code to any Kubernetes cluster. So the authentication, as I mentioned, is such keys. Uh, so this, this also brings in a new pattern of doing things using Kubernetes operators and uh, controllers. So this is the custom resource definition that we saw. Uh, there is the API word, version 9 and all you can see. Uh, this is a custom YAML that we created, and Kubernetes supports this. Um, so there is access control is using SSH keys, and uh, you can just push your any, push your directory in any configuration. You just need to tell uh, the tell the GitHub controller where your Docker file is and where it should be in the Docker file. So why should you use this? Um, easier, everybody knows Git. You can just keep Git pushing things. Uh, quick iteration time again. Uh, you don't need to wait for the Docker build Docker uh, 
push this stuff to happen. Um, again, there's no complicated RPAC rules. You can restrict what GitHub can do on the cluster using RPAC. So if you're in a big organization kind of set up or where authentication is a problem, your DevOps or the administrators can set up the it set up GitHub for you and then provide access using simple authentication is just how Git works. Now it's a very small tool, can be replaced with whatever you want later to move to production or whenever you want a more complicated type of stuff. So this kind of idea of doing things with Git push can be extended to more DevOps tasks if you think about it. So you can modify this hook to do all sort of things you want. GitHub doesn't do this at the moment, but you can easily for you edit the hook and do all these things. So this is just an idea or an upcoming thing uh, in the DevOps slash uh, uh, CI ops world where doing things using Git is becoming very prominent. So you can build and run uh, unit tests uh, deploy your code, deploy configuration, uh, apply stateful migrations. All things can be done from a Git hook. So, as I mentioned earlier, there's a new pattern of doing applications of Kubernetes, which is through this operator pattern. So, Kubernetes is the new kernel, or hey mentioned something like that. Kubernetes, or Jorge, Jorge quoted people making these codes. Uh, Kubernetes is a new application platform. So I was in a talk earlier uh, this year, and uh, if you know this, this uh, the founding team of Kubernetes, Craig, McLuki, Joe Veda, and Brandon Burns. So I was at a talk by Craig McLuki, and he was his talk was about how Kubernetes is a platform platform. It's a platform to build platforms. So that's more like what Kubernetes is trying to achieve. It's giving you all these constructs with which you can build complex applications or complex platforms for your own use case. So the way to achieve this is to make use of Kubernetes uh, primitives called custom resource definitions. So you already have Kubernetes uh, controllers doing things like deployment services and stuff like that. Now you can define your own controllers watching on a custom resource definition called operators and there are nice tools from CoreOS team which is now the Red Hat team uh, called Operator SDK, there is another thing called Cube Builder, a lot of things which will help you achieve this pattern. Where along with the Kubernetes YAMLs, you will have your own application specific YAMLs and your, your own application specific controllers is working constantly in the background to realize this uh, YAML definition that you have defined by observing the current state. This is a common way of doing things in the Kubernetes uh, ecosystem. There is a controller looking at the current state of the cluster. It also knows what the desired state should be and it's doing actions to realize the desired state. This brings us to something called, uh, this can be, uh, a, a comparison can be drawn from a typical pipeline, DevOps pipeline and an imbalance in the uh, Kubernetes domain. So, building and running tests can be done in the Docker file. Uh, multi stage Docker files can do this very easily. Uh, stateful tasks and all these things can be Kubernetes manifests. And then, if you have your own custom resource definitions, you can do a lot of other extra stuff with it. And integration tests can be run with Kubernetes init containers, jobs, and all these things. So, this introduces a new paradigm called GitOps, and this is a definition of GitOps given by the folks who coined it, uh, the team at VWorks, and uh, where everything is both declarative and version controlled. And uh, you can go through this in detail later. So you can have whatever can be described, can be observed, and technically what is boils down at the end is whatever you can define in your Git repo can be automated and can be easily observed later. So, here is, a, uh, is GitOps different from DevOps or GitOps? Is it a new thing? It's a way of doing DevOps. It's not a replacement for DevOps. Uh, we, uh, we at Hasuda believe that 
CI ops or, or GitOps and their pipelines are two way of doing DevOps. And uh, GitOps is declarating DevOps. If you look at a pipeline where you define certain steps to achieve a final state, it's imperative. Your steps are getting defined there. But GitOps is you are only defining the final state and there are controllers working in the background to achieve the final state. So defining the steps of the pipeline in a YAML file does not make it declarative. So that's a good thing that we need to remember. So these are the advantages of GitOps, declarative, Git. You get version control on it, you get a code review process on your configuration, you get uh, monitoring with the current state and the desired state. But the this also brings in very clear developer and operations boundaries uh, where developers only worry about the code and operators worry about how to deploy this on the uh, cluster. And developers can deploy it using git push to the cluster. So, but there are challenges to be solved yet. Uh, you cannot put everything in a git repo. Secrets are there, dynamic variables are there. New tools are required to achieve certain things which have been traditionally done in a traditional manner. But uh, these problems are getting solved and uh, a lot of companies are working towards achieving this common goal of doing everything using it. So yeah, that's my talk. Thanks for listening. I have a couple of minutes for questions. Yes. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Otherwise, just go check it and check out GitQ. Contributions are welcome. Uh, ping us on Discord or Kubernetes, Slack wherever uh, yeah start the repo again okay. just make us cool any questions Pardon? so as I mentioned uh, authentication is uh, done using SSS public keys so if you want your administrator or you yourself can create a code whoever is a cluster administrator can create remotes and you can say that only this SSH keys are allowed to push this code. So this will help you do a very easy user management. Push this add the SSH key to the remote or YAML file and it will be uh, accepted. Yeah, so that's how user management. Only the master branch is built and deployed on the cluster. So if you have to push a uh, development branch or branch A on your local, you have to do git push remote name, your branch name for the master. So this will push your branch to the master of the remote. So that every push will result in a deployment process. So if you push 10 commits together in a single push, all these 10 commits are taken together and a new docker image is built, tagged with that latest commit and then deployed as a new Kubernetes product. So you can achieve zero downtime uh, rollouts and all using the, the same primitive. So you can update, you can say which deployment you want to update, which container in the deployment you want to update for any push to this end. So all these are configurable using the YAML file. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. So right now the way GitQ works is, uh, so the question was about provisioning, does it also consider provisioning into account? Um, no, because the way that it's designed to use is as a developer tool in your developing phases. So wherever you want the application to run, you would install GitQ there itself. So it will update its same cluster, so it's in the same cluster, it will not contact a different cluster in the current state. But you can anyway, but so much you can always achieve a lot of things. Okay, thank you, thanks a lot. You can find me here. Um, I have some cool Hustler stickers, so find me around and grab them if you want. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks, sir. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Shay, and uh, uh, thanks, guys. And so now there will be a 15 minutes of a tea break. Tea is served uh, on the eighth floor. And uh, in between you can visit the exhibition area, it's in the basement of the central block. So we have a 